Luca, Evangelina, thanks so much for coming to the podcast. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Rich. Good to see you. Yeah, you as well. Um, now, Luca, we're on podcast normally always talking about roads. Today, we're going to talk about water. <laughs> never, never ending. There, there's always something. <laughs> so on that note, I'll stop laughing because it's a pretty serious subject. Um, I've talked with Host Wave from Municipality. I've talked with some attorneys. I've talked with some people who were members of the Estada Board at, at various times. Um, I'd really like to hear from you what's going on, uh, what are the ramifications, and what, what are people experiencing right now? Because I'm getting a lot of questions, and I hear a lot of rumors. There's a lot of various opinions, and you know how it is in Osara. When something starts going, the rumor mill gets going, and it, it's, it's, it's getting a little weird. So can you please help us understand what's going on and what the true situation is and give us your thoughts, please? Mm -hmm. uh, well, the thing is that, you know, you cannot, if you hear rumors, it's very difficult to, to know what's going on because if you don't get a legal document, something that really states legally what's going on, a document from the ASADA or from the AIA, you should not believe anything because that, that's, that, is, that, that has been happened and that caused more confusion on all this process. The things that we know, and you know, it's very important we we know very little and that is the problem that we have that nobody knows what's going on and the only fact that we have is that the AIA was requesting the asadas to update all their situation the administration situations and also the the water amount of water that they have and all that with the pump test and all that but they send those those requirements to the asada and from the asada we haven't received any official documents of of what they are doing so it's very uncertain when this will get resolved we were saying that this will be resolved in may not not we they were saying they that. were saying yes <laughs> they were saying that, that this would get resolved in may and and look where we are now and now we know exactly the exactly same. exactly the same at from that point and nordia sada or the aya they they cannot they don't say anything or they don't give us any proof of a legal document of what was submitted, what they received, and what the and, and the worst case is because we don't know a timeline from any of, of them. So it's that is that is the situation that we have. That's and, and we cannot count on more information than than that. And that's why we have to see what we do to figure out what's going on and what and what can we do to solve it so what do we do now okay so the first thing we did was uh, some months ago in actually in may because because the asada of the honest they said we will be ready in may so we were like, okay, we can wait. It's okay. We can wait. We can work in the in the projects, in the design, and in May we will get the water. Then we we came to May and nothing happened. So we went to talk to the Asada and we spoke to Lily. And at that moment we freaked out, and we came, and we said, okay, this is this is not solving soon. So we started talking to people. And so we went and we spoke to the major of the municipality of Nicoya. He didn't know anything. He didn't know anything. He was like, what are you talking about? What, what is this? Oh, let me call to an, another Asada friend to see what are they doing? He was completely lost. He had no idea. It was May already. And this and is he, May. Yeah, and, yes. he, and he had no idea that the Asadas of Nosara were not allowed to give water. After that, he, um, he organized a meeting with the AIA, some AIA people. They were not very fl friendly to us. Uh, they were actually- They invited, they invited no, it us was, it, the was, it was 
it was the major who invited us to the meeting and the IEA people were kind of surprised that we were in a meeting that they actually were very kind of angry that we were in a meeting and we were saying, look, what are you doing? Are you realizing what are you doing? Are you realizing the impact that this is causing, causing in Nosara? So they were a bit surprised at this. And after that, basically we, we have not had any answer from any public institution, at least from, for us, like, you know, like, like any other Costa Rican person. We have tried to contact the IER president or major, I don't know how to call it. And mm -hmm. we try yeah. to contact the presidential, uh, the wife of the president, because she's in charge of the development of Guanacaste. Nothing, like nothing. So right now, what we are doing is we are basically putting together as many people as we can that are in the process of getting water. And to, so that we have cases, because if you, if you don't have a case, if you don't have one person that needs water or two or three or four or five, you have nothing, right? You, you can prove, you cannot come to the government and say, look, we have 10 people that needs water and how do we solve this, right? So what we are right now doing is that we are trying to uh, put together a group of people that needs the water for, the, for their construction or their project, put them all together and basically organizing with a group of lawyers of San Jose to try to get the information because we can, as, a, as, as, as Costa Ricans, we can't get it. It's so hard. We, we, we don't get the right answers. We don't, we need to get like a group of people to be represented by a lawyer organization, like a company or something, to be able to request the information and to find out what is the real situation and if there is a possibility to solve it in a faster way. Because- okay, so if, if I, if, can I ask a question real quick, just to make sure whoever's listening is following us. So the situation is you've been requesting information. I'll just do like a quick synopsis. You've been, you were told, wait till May. May came and went. We're now coming up into October. Um, you've went to meetings, you've asked and asked and asked. There's no documents. There's no information at all, it sounds like. And that's the biggest source of frustration. So as a result, you're trying to get people who are going through this together to unite to present the evidence to try to get some sort of action is that is that what is that where we're at yes yes okay. yes okay keep going i just wanted to make sure i understood it all along the way well that's from that's that's where we are right now we know you know like like many other things in costa rica it will get solved it will get solved a uh, sooner or later because the IEA is going to finish the process. The IEA already has the information from the ASALA and sometime they will say, yes, you can proceed and you can give water because yes, for the ASALA is very, um, I mean, they have the documentation to prove that they have the capacity to give water. And, they, and the other thing is that they have the capacity to invest or, or to improve the system. So I don't see this to be an eternal problem. So the reason why we're doing this is because we don't want this to last too much. Like Got it. So have, you're trying to get some finality, uh, some sort the, of like action to start rolling. That that's your goal right now is like hurry up, make a decision, or tell us when this is supposed to happen so we can balance our lives. Is that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And the other, the other thing, the other very very important thing to understand is the impact that this has in the community. People of Nosara, the locals, most of the locals, many of the locals live from construction. We work, it's a lot of people that works in construction. We, we the, the market right now is still, there is a still buildings that are, that are coming from, you know, from, from the beginning of the year that have the permits. There are still projects that have permits because they requested the water before 
of this situation. So, but there's going to be a really big gap. Like we already have seven months of projects that stopped and that's going to happen at some point. That's, that's like a bomb, right? That's like a, like, like something that could explode in many different ways. What is going to happen when we have water? Are all the projects going to start at the same time? Or, yeah. or what's going to happen with all the people that are going to start being fired? There's going to yeah. be like, if, if the well, well, we already have a security issue now. And whenever construction jobs go away, unfortunately, that, mm -hmm. that does happen. Um, okay. uh, another question is, <clears throat> what, what is, what will the Asada do with all these people if the water comes? If, if the water comes, are they provide the water letters for all of them and the connection at once? You know, that is, as more we wait for this, there are things that can happen later that, that we don't know, you know, that's... that's, that's, that's you're bringing up interesting <laughs> points. You, re, you really are. Because um, right now I'm getting asked daily, um, sometimes a couple times a day, is this just people who are mad about development trying to stop development and this is the way they're doing it now the attorneys and other people say no it, it's just a processing and it takes time and the paperwork needed to be updated the systems etc cetera, etc cetera. that just needed to process what you're bringing up is something very interesting because we are going to have a glut of things slowing down and on one hand that seems good in some ways because those no sar has been growing very rapidly but on the flip side, there's other problems that come with this too that we're not addressing. And that's something that you just went through, Evangelina. That is, and, and Luca, that is, that's a real point. If people go without their jobs, what happens then? And then if the permits do come back, does it all happen at once? And then everyone's rushing in and that causes pricing and supply and demand adjustments. There's, it's more complicated than just, oh, no, sorry, it's not developing for a while. Everyone's settled down. There's other parts of it. And yeah, that's a really good point. And, and you know, there are other things. There are other things. It's very strange because at the beginning, at the beginning, the AYA was requesting the ASADAS to get some updates on all their administration things and all that. And at the beginning, it was told that they needed to do an update on the capacity of the water and they had to do the test of the seven, 72 hours. And so it, it, at that point, we were thinking that that was the only requirement and that was the most urgent, but they already finished that. And, the, 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 and they sent, supposedly they sent that to the IA. The IA is taking, I don't know how long to respond to that. But then there is another thing that there are things that some other requirements that it seems that there is not a list of all the things that they have to do because what we were hearing and what appears is that they also have to update some properties that are right now on the name of the NCA. And so it means that they don't own the properties where some of the wells are. So the NCA has to trespass legally those property to the ASAR. And so the question is, if that was an issue from the beginning or, or a requirement that AYA was asking to update that, why are they not working on that? Or what are they doing on that, on, on, on that uh, specific item? And that is something that we don't know. So what can happen is that they send this requirement of the 72 hours. And then when they are done with that, the IA will think, okay, and now do this other thing. And then what else will come? Nobody knows the whole list of things. And instead of working on a whole list, everything at the same time, it seems they are doing like one by one. And the fear is that other things appear and that this, that this takes very long because only on that item to tra trespass those legal properties, how long will that take? Mm -hmm. and also, wow. Well, that's a, that's, mm -hmm. yeah, sorry, you, you were gonna say something? No, I'm just digesting everything Luca just said. And I'm, 
as he was talking, I was just thinking maybe this was why I'm getting contacted so much and people are, are reaching out. Um, and they're really concerned because they think that people might be finding a way to impede development. And I don't want to believe that. I, I, I don't, none of us control the marketplace. It, it, like, uh, it's more complicated than, than a lot of people realize. And it's even more complicated as I'm listening to you two talk because there's a lot of different parts of this. And because, you know, we had a meeting regarding that, what I just told you. We had a meeting with Lily Adams about three months ago, just to listen her and see what her point of view is of all this. And she was the one saying, this requirement about the wells is just one step. That's just the, the first step. But she didn't tell what other steps are coming. So that is very concerning, you know? Nobody knows what else will come later. And that's why, that's why we have to figure out, we need information of what other things is the IA requesting to the ASAL. And then we have to see if the ASADA is doing the things at the right moment. And, but you know, it's very hard because we have to find out what, what they have to do. They don't give us that information. It's, that's, that's crazy, you know? Only the lawyers can get to that, to the point of force them to give the information. That's, you know, that's very, one thing, one thing that I wanted to point out that we were talking before, it's about uh, that this could be a measure of controlling development. I would say, yes, it is a good, it is a way to control good development, but not the bad development. Because people that build without permits and people that are going to start jumping the fence they will keep building and that people are not going to get permits and that is just going to be a mess because that is what had happened for example that was that was uh, happening in santa teresa years ago when they didn't have water remember they were delivering the water in tanks and and it's a mess once you don't have the right conditions for a development to say okay this is the quantity of water um, that we have, uh, you cannot build a big pool, for example, or whatever. You can regulate. This is what we have. This is what we can do with what we have. But if you say you can't do anything, then when it's what what is going to start happening is that we are going to become a place that just happens anything without any control. Do you understand mm -hmm. what I mean? This is. I think I do informality all this all this will also become you know all the construction will become on building without permit informality and all that and then plus that the municipality or the government they will receive less taxes so that's that's another impact this impacts a lot of people the, the builders the local workers the developers architects you as a realtor and also the municipality because the, and, and in this case of Nosara, the municipality of Nicoya is getting more than 50% of the taxes of the whole canton of Nicoya from Nosara. All interesting points, all very interesting points. Um, keep going while you have this platform and keep sharing this, your, your thoughts and insights because I can tell you've been thinking about this for months now. And it's got to be frustrating trying to communicate with your clients and also just for yourselves figuring out how to handle all this. The whole thing that the IA intended to do has, has a good intention in a way. You know, what they want is they want the asadas to put in order all their, all their things. The, 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 the wells are in the right uh, name and the wells have the good capacity and the tanks are big enough. So that is good. Quality of water. The quality yeah. of water to have the quality that of soil. So all this is good. We are not against that. What we are against is the way it was made. They didn't have a program. They didn't have a planning. 
they didn't say, okay, you have to do this test in the follow in the next six months. And by six months, you have to present this. And by eight months, you have to have all your properties on your names. And then after that time, if you don't comply with all this, we will, we will not let you give water, right? But right, but the way they did it, they just came and they said, you have to do this, 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 this. And until then, you can't give any water from, from today, from today, right? So we are not against getting all the asas because it's actually, it's all the asas. The asa of Nosara has the same situation. And, and the asa of Nosara of town, it's even worse because they don't have the money to build tanks or to buy more properties or to invest. You know, the asa of Yones, they have the support of all the investors that are willing to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to improve the system. But the asa of town, they don't have the money, right? So it's a very weird thinking of the government because when they stop the development of guiones, let's say, or Bosque Verde, for example, that are in the same situation, they stop receiving money in taxes. And if they don't receive money in taxes, they cannot improve the, uh, the poor asadas, like the asada of, of Nosada town. So how are they going to invest a, in the asadas that don't have money if they stop the development of the rich areas? So it's a very strange planning, or I don't know if someone thought about all this before mm -hmm. they, they started all this uh, mm -hmm. idea. And also, when we were in the meeting, we say we said to the to one of the ladies of the IA, we said, why are you treating all the asadas the same way? Right? Because for example, you you the asada of Guiones could have the capacity to to improve the system if it's needed. I think it's actually not needed, but right right now in the moment I think they have enough water. But if they need it, they would have the economical capacity to do it. But then you treat the same way this, uh, and plus this asa means a lot of investment in Costa Rica or in Nosara. But then you treat it the exactly the same way as a very, very, very little asa up in the mountains where may maybe they don't need to give a water connection for a year, but you treat it exactly the same way. Why? And they said, because we don't have the capacity to treat different every asa because, there's, because so there's so many, because there are so many. So my question now is, if they didn't have the capacity to, to, to give a plan for each asada, con, uh, considering the situations of each of the asadas, how are they going to get the capacity now to review the information that all the asadas are going to send to them at the same time? Just imagine- Was that, was that question answered, addressed or no. not, not addressed? No, no. So now probably they are getting, the AIA is getting, I don't know how many, because this, I think this is a, a polit, a, como se dice, como an act or a, a situation that is happening in the whole country. How is the, the AIA going to review or how much is it going to take for them to review the information of each asylum? That's why this problem is becoming bigger and bigger. And on all this, what Evangelina is saying, just pointing the Asada of Guiones, there is a big contradiction because in the Asada, Lily Adams told us that they have capacity for the next 10 years to provide water. And if they don't have the capacity, it's very easy for them to improve the system with all the donations or with, you know, with, with the investors just putting money there to improve the system. But but the IEA, instead of telling the ASADA, okay, we need updates on all these legal things and on the wells and all that. But if you have the capacity to provide water, keep providing the water. That's the big contradiction. They have water, but they cannot provide the water. You know, that's, that's the very bad thing. 
In some of the other asadas, they don't have the capacity, so they have to prove all those things. Or they have to build. Or they have to build more. For, for and, example. And of course, they are not allowed to give more water letters. But in the case of the asada of Kiones, they should say the asada, okay, you can keep providing water while you are updating all the situations. That's the big contradiction that we see on all this. Boy, there's not any easy solution to this. I think I think it is if when when you take the responsibility of telling to, of taking this situation or or deciding taking a decision we are going to do this like the the IA took, took this decision to say okay we're going to do this we're going to request this to all the SSAs and we're not going to tell them hey we're going to tell them not to give water to anyone they should get the responsibility to check what, what, the, what they did and to review, okay, we did a mess. We need to find a way to organize this situation, to make a planning, to review that each asada has a completely different situation from another. Some asadas don't have water, some asadas don't have money. <laughs> Some of us have water and money, right? And 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 organize the asas in that way. But they but that's their responsibility. And so what do we do now? That we is, have to get together. That, that is what we are trying to do. We are trying to put a group together of clients and and have them represented by a by a lawyer company so that the lawyers can go with a big case and make all the research of what's going on get all the information and then yes with that information they should have a chance to see what to do but right now right now we don't know right now we need the information luca this is kind of reminding me of the road situation Remember yeah. when they, they yes, had yes, the money? It's, then exactly it was gone. The same. it's the same thing. Oh, uh, yeah. See? So basically, and, we yeah. got to get the vice president to come have big, crazy meetings, get it on the news. And then eventually, if we yell out enough, they'll pay, they'll pay attention to it. Is, is, that, yeah. is that how That's this is going? Same. It is the same thing. Yes, it's the same. I feel it's the, I, my feeling is the same thing in that, in all this, <laughs> with, the, with the public institutions, you have to find you have to find out what's going on by yourself because if not they will never give you a response or they will take just a while and it looks you know that's very frustrating but it's because it seems that they don't care that's very very frustrating it's like okay they don't they don't care what's going on here they don't care about the people they don't care about the money they don't care about you know from one point saying Okay, Costa Rica is very open for investors. Come invest here in Costa Rica. This is nice. This is pura vida. And then the investors come, they put the money in, they put all their dreams in houses and whatever, and then they cannot build. You know, what's, what sign is that? You guys are breaking rule number one. And we've talked about this before. My, my rule number one for living in Nosara and operating is don't make sense. If you make sense, it's very challenging and you're making sense. You keep bringing up these logical questions and points. So I, I don't know what to tell you. I think it's going to be pretty tough. Yes. Yes. Wow. Okay. So people listening to this episode, what you want, what, what do you want them to do? Go ahead and talk directly to the people listening. What would you like to have happen? Uh, like, do they contact you? Like, like, how do you want them to start? Yes. Well, we started together with another local architecture company, and we already put together uh, the, the, the other architect clients and our clients, and we put them all together. If you are working with another architect or a company, or you're planning to, to, you are working even in the draft proposal with another architect, you're all welcome to join. This is open for, for anyone that is uh, right now in the process of designing and building and as many people as we get, the better. 
Can I ask how many people you have together right now between the two architectural firms talking about this? 25, around 25. And how many are you trying to get? Because 25, that's not a small number. That's, that's, that's a lot and of people. I, and I think in the process of everything, it should, should be in around 50 or 60. Jeez. So two, two thoughts. One, there's a lot of people who want to build. So is that bad for Nosara? And then two, I'm thinking of all your points, Evangelina, of saying this is bigger than just stopping development in this one spot because there's going to be three, four, five, six other issues that surface. So where does the ethical part of all this fit in? As people are listening to this, I'm wondering what they're thinking and I'm wondering what your thoughts are. In relation of the, of the construction? Yeah, because we, we're not getting water permits. And to many people, they say that's a blessing. It's a great thing you've already clarified that that's not necessarily the truth. There's people who lose jobs. There's gonna be a marketplace that adjusts. Um, I'm asking you, where do you sit on the ethical side of this whole thing? Uh, Pro-development, anti-development in the middle, like just give us kind of your general, how you sleep at night working inside of real estate is something that we all have to ask ourselves because whenever you talk to people on the street, the realtors, the architects, the builders are ruining this place. They're just taking it over. I'm glad that there's no water permits because that'll save Nosara. That's a mentality that's out there that your friends think who you say hi to every day. Lots of people think that. So I'm just trying to get further into your mind of how do you address that? And what, what's your take on it? Well, we can do the things the right way and we can do the things the wrong way. I think people should look what they do because it's gonna happen. Development is gonna happen, right or wrong. And I think it's a matter of people taking the right decisions. And also we need investment from the government, from, from, for example, from the municipality to do little things that would organize and save and protect. For example, we talk a lot about um, the setbacks or the spaces for, for nature or for trees or for all these things, but you don't see any, anything coming from the municipality to mark these spaces. Do you understand? I don't know if I, if I'm, I'm, I understand. So you're looking for more, more, more okay. designations well, and more regulations mm -hmm. to have also the institutions doing their their work of doing the regulations right to control all the informality. A lot of people building without permits. You know, people getting too close to the to the rivers, to the creeks. Uh, people cutting trees without permits, all those things. We need the support of all the institutions from INAE, from the municipality. You know, this, this is a work all, all together. So what I'm hearing from you guys is not that you're anti anything or super pro anything. What you're saying is let's just try to do it right and make sense of it. But don't believe this notion that you're stopping development is in any way helping. There's lots of ways it's hurting. Is that is that what I'm hearing? See. See, I, I think I think it creates exactly the opposite. It's, Elaborate on that. If, if we have good investors, because we do have good investors, mm -hmm. uh, we, we do have good investors and we get a lot of people, a lot of our clients that they care so much about what they are doing and the impact and how can they use less water and how can they keep the trees and how do we have more green areas? We have these all the time with people. And that is the people that we want to attract to Nosara. But what happens is if this is this kind of mess, these people that are serious people, they will just go somewhere else and we will get crappy people that don't care for permits, that don't care for doing anything. And that is what, that, that's what's going to happen here. You know, it's, it's hey, this, uh, this, this is not going to stop. This is not going to stop people. This is just going to bring the wrong people. To Nosara. And, and the more the more clear the things are, the more clear the rules are, the more organized the ASA is or the municipality, the more organized the municipality is, the harder is to do the wrong things. 